booktube it's june already how on earth did that happen i feel like i've only just taken my christmas tree down and now we're at june we're halfway through the year i don't know where the time went so i thought it might be a good time to review my 2016 reading resolutions that i made and see where i'm up to and so the first one i put was to read a hundred books i've read 62 books so far which i'm really pleased about the only thing is, is that some of them are like small little books, you know, like, like a Penguin Black classic and there's quite a big chunk of graphic novels as well. And although I'm not saying they're not real books, they are, I would just like to read a hundred, you know, full length proper, proper books, Pro proper books, you know what I mean. So I feel like I'm on track with that, I'm enjoying reading, I'm loving being part of the booktube community and I think that is definitely firing up my desire to read more and read more, you know, different things that I'm not experienced before. The second one is to reread my favourites. So far I've only reread Jane Eyre. I really should, I don't know why I don't reread that, well I do know why I don't reread, it's because I always feel like there's something else to read, there's something new to read and if I go back and reread an old favourite it's almost like I shouldn't say a waste of my time because it's never going to be a waste of my time revisiting an old friend and going back to something I know that I love but it's like I don't have much time because I'm working all the time so the time I've got I want to experience that new thing. I have to say though having reread Jane Eyre and it just reaffirmed that it is my favourite book of all time I'm absolutely loving it and finding so much more in it than I did the first time so I'm contradicting myself really, even though it might not be new to me, there are new things in a, a reread all the time, so maybe I need to, you know, refocus on that one. The third one was read book, read from my own books, and I have done that to a degree, I still have new books coming in all the time, but I, I do feel like I have read quite a good chunk of what I already had on my shelf so I'm quite pleased with the way I'm going on that one. Some of the books I've read have been on my shelf for quite a while. I did do a 2016 TBR and I did do 12 books for that. Um, I think I've read two of those so I do need to get along with that one as well because they aren't back on the shelves. I lifted them off to purposely make them pick them up, but then I just keep picking other things up as well. And the fourth resolution um, was to buy less books. As time's gone on this year, I've really got to grips with this one and thought, what a wasted resolution. Why should I apologise for buying books? Why should I buy less books? I don't drink a lot. I don't smoke, I don't go out very often, I don't watch a lot of TV, my favourite thing in the world to do is read a book, my favourite thing is to discover new books and you know that whole experience of buying a book, the discovering a new friend, discovering a new adventure and I work really hard for my money so why should I feel bad about buying books? I only buy books that I want to read I only buy books because it's something that will interest me, it will entertain me, it will teach me something. So I am not going to apologise for buying books and I am certainly not going to try and buy less books. The only thing that's going to limit my book buying is the amount of money I've got spur to buy books. So forget that one. The fifth one I've got is to read more non-fiction. I have been reading non-fiction. I've sort of tried to do at least one non-fiction book every month alongside all the other books that I'm reading and at the moment that's probably taken in the form of quite a few biographies and things like that but I have read some books on feminism and things like that and I've been enjoying the non-fiction books I've got loads of non-fiction books on my shelves I've got lots of different history books and biographies and memoirs and all sorts of things so they need to be something else that I start getting into as well and, and reading some of those because I'm really enjoying the non-fiction experience. The ones that I've read in particular are often read like a novel so it's not a textbook that you're reading, you can actually read from cover to cover so the ones I've read have been great. The sixth resolution I had was to read bigger books. I've failed miserably on this one so far. I don't know what's wrong with me. When I look at how many pages I read over a month, like say for example last month I read about 4,000 pages in a month. Now that is a lot for me and if you think about a big book will be between 700 and maybe what a thousand pages so I could do four of those in a month. I don't know why I'm just so put off by the size of the book. I just think it's going to take up too much time. I'm going to get bogged down with that and I'll just read that and nothing else. 
And it's totally stupid because when I have read big books in the past, things like I read uh, The Crimson Petal and the White, I loved it. I didn't want it to end. It wasn't enough pages. So I don't know why I just have this ridiculous phobia of big books. So that's something else I need to get refocused on is just to bite the bullet, dive in. A lot of the big books I own have got really, really good recommendations. People rave about them so I don't know why I'm being so pathetic. The seventh one on my list is to read diversely. I think I'm getting there with that one. I'm trying to read from uh, lots of different countries and cultures if I can. There's some LGBTQ+, plus. I think that's the whole... You've got everybody in there, some of those that I've read as well and I'm, I'm certainly enjoying it. I'm reading, trying to read writers from different, different ethnicities, different backgrounds, different cultures and I'm really enjoying that experience and so I think I'm doing all right with that but could do better and so I would definitely like to you know read some more of the authors that I've got on my shelves that that would meet that objective and the final one is to read translated fiction I've read some translated fiction some Italian some German but they tend to have been quite small I have bought some books uh, that are translated this year, notably Han Kang's two books, uh, Human Acts and The Vegetarian. I've bought the Eleanor Ferrante one, the Family Saga one, and I can't remember what it's called, but that's an Italian book. So this will actually, now it's prompted me to sort of think, yeah, take some of those books off the shelf and have a look at some of those other authors, the translated works that I haven't read enough of, I don't think. So, so far I'm doing okay. I think it's been a good idea to revisit this list because it's definitely given me a little bit of a kick up the backside to get back on track with some of the ones that I want to do because ultimately this list is something that I wanted to do for me. It wasn't something I felt I ought to do, it's something I wanted to do. And so it's just time, it flies doesn't it, before you know it it's June, half the year's gone. So I've got half the year left to get back on track with some of these, to refocus my efforts and keep on reading. So I'll see you all soon, let me know how you're going, if you've made any resolutions for this year and how you're getting on with them, any targets, any goals that you've set, anything you want to achieve, any recommendations that you've got and I'll see you all soon.